It's uh, the second day of April 2005 here in New Orleans, Louisiana. We're here every week bringing you New Orleans finest restaurants and musicians. And today we've got a real treat for you. If you're a loyal viewer, you know for the last few weeks we've been talking about a great event in our city for a it's a gala for one of our non profit nonprofits called the Odyssey House. And the title of the event was the Crawfish Odyssey. We were very privileged to be selected as a judge, to judge along with several other celebrity judges, we'll tell you in a little bit, uh, the various restaurants' contributions on crawfish. So what we thought we'd do today, rather than bring in a new restaurant, is let you take a look at some of the sights and sounds of what we experienced last night. We actually have pictures of all of the chefs, or at least their dishes, and we're hoping that some of the chefs that we invited them to call in today to either talk about their dish and or their restaurant. So even though we don't have a live in-studio guest, we're hoping you'll hear from some today to talk about how they enjoyed their experience last night. But let me tell you a little bit about it, and we'll actually start the uh, ball rolling. Uh, as we mentioned, it is uh, Odyssey House is a not-for-profit for men, women, and women with children who uh, need a long-term residential facility for addictions of substance abuse. It's been around, I believe, uh, a long, long time. It's in a wonderful old home that's over 100 years old. That was originally, a, I believe, a religious uh, nun's uh, home and uh, was donated to this not-for-profit. Um, in order to raise funds, they have a couple of galas every year. And the spring one started, this is its third event, uh, and it was held downtown at the wonderful uh, New Orleans Doubletree Hotel on the beautiful 16th floor, which is right near the top, which is a magnificent ballroom, all glass, floor to ceiling on both sides, in which you could see the entire parameters of our city. So can't see anything pretty in New Orleans in the skyline at night. One side with the magnificent river view, the other side the downtown uh, Harrah's and all the rest of the magnificent buildings that we have, plus the bridges in the background. So it made for a lovely setting. Uh, we had, uh, I believe, 12 restaurants participating. We also had uh, entertainment, a wonderful band called the Leah Chase Band. And I know you recognize that name, Leah Chase. Leah Chase has a daughter by the same name and a wonderful jazz quartet that played all during the evening, quite entertaining. Uh, and uh, we had several of the judges I mentioned. Besides the magnificent Leah Chase, there were some local celebrities here in New Orleans on Channel 6 WDSU. Uh, Roop Raj, the newscaster, was also a celebrity judge. He's done it for three years as well. We have the lovely lady who plays the treasure chest mermaid, who also is the director of Eastover's uh, uh, golf club. She, she was a fantastic judge. Plus the uh, two owners of the uh, Louisiana Seafood Exchange, which is a, so important, provides all the seafood to all of our fine restaurants here in Louisiana. A gentleman from the Aramark Convention Center that is responsible for providing all of the food uh, for the sessions, et cetera, and special conventions here in our big city. And yours truly. So it made up a lovely combination of uh, ladies and gents and we were chosen to select from the 12 dishes presented uh, the top dish and the top three dishes, excuse me. In addition to that, there was also an award for table presentation, how each um, restaurant set up their table for display. And there was a popular prize, meaning not only the judges, but also every individual who participated who attended got a chance to also choose their favorite. So. Uh, it was quite a bit of excitement. There was five categories of award possibilities, plus beautiful raffles, great, great uh, auction items that many of the attendees um, received. What we're going to do now is actually start taking a look at some of the uh, pictures we have. First of all, as you first entered the magnificent dining room was this great, great centerpiece that was a fountain uh, and in the, out of the fountain, surrounded by the fountain, was Louisiana crawfish. And as you can see it there, with the great the water, the light, this was a centerpiece of the magnificent ballroom. And for a while there, uh, no one was eating because they thought it was strictly the uh, centerpiece. But, but just took just a few minutes for someone to go in there and dig into those mud bugs 
And next thing you know, uh, they were constantly refilling around, around the magnificent uh, fountain. So it was Greek, not only a visual treat, but also a taster treat as well. So that was all you could eat crawfish right there. So you can imagine how quickly uh, that was and well received. Okay. As I mentioned, what we'll do now is we're going to uh, actually start showing you. Now, we don't have pictures of all the chefs, but we at least have each dish. Uh, one of the most prestigious restaurants here in the city of, of New Orleans is Galatoire's. Galatoire's, for those who know it, has been a fixture on Bourbon Street in the second hundred block for, I know it's got to be 100 years or 70 years, I think it celebrated its anniversary. One of the most outstanding restaurants, well known for dishes that it's created, as well as a place to be seen, as well as to, be, uh, to eat. So it's not only a, a great, great dining experience, it's also one of the most social experiences here in the city of New Orleans. And I think we have a picture of what Galatoire's chef, now unfortunately he wasn't there, so they had someone in his absence to go ahead and uh, uh, serve, but prepared a fabulous dish. And you can look at it, now these are crawfish in phyllo dough. I was uh, accidentally pleased to taste this earlier when Galatoire's did a, uh, a a wonderful gesture to our Louisiana Mint Museum. They made a donation to an exhibit that's called the New Orleans Wine and Beverage Museum. And they donated a lot of the memorabilia from all of its years of restaurants business, as well as presenting this particular dish along with a lot of other dishes for people to sample. So I had a prelude and didn't really know that that was gonna be uh, one of the dishes that we would be judging. But as you saw, it was a great little cup of filo dough, Wonderful taste treat in it, served cool, but really, really delicious. Very well done, very light, a great way to start. Uh, in addition to that, so that was Galatoire's. Now the next one was uh, one of the restaurants that we actually had here on the uh, restaurant review just a, a few months ago, and that was the, uh, let's see which one we had, one number two. That was the Common Street Deli, is that it? Yeah, Common Street Deli. Uh, if you remember, it was a brand new restaurant opened in the 700 block of Common Street, how obvious, right downtown in our uh, business district. Um, it's open for breakfast and lunch. Two young ladies who uh, have just really started in the restaurant business. and They wanted to do something together. They both had individual talents they thought, thought they could bring to the uh, restaurant business and have succeeded greatly. Uh, they jumped at the chance to be among some of the most prestigious restaurants, and they were certainly one of the newest ones there. Whenever I'm asked to be involved, I do try and get uh, the newer restaurants, which oftentimes are overlooked in these galas, uh, to participate. So we were real pleased when uh, Common Street Deli uh, jumped at the opportunity to do a crawfish dish. And what we're going to do now is let's take a look and see what that crawfish is. They named it Crawfish Marcello. And if you see, uh, you can tell, really a very creative. It was a, uh, a wrap uh, that was uh, served. For people who know wrap, that's the uh, a burrito style dough, so southwestern influence. Stuffed with crawfish and a lot of other stuffings. Uh, very, very tasty um, and was uh, very well done. We'll see one of the chefs uh, for Common Street Deli. Uh, I'm hoping that she was going to schedule a call in, but I guess if not, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, there she is, and all her bright self. She looked very nice. In fact, Common Street Deli, we didn't take a picture, but as I mentioned, one of the um, criteria, in addition to the food, even though Common Street Deli did not win one of the top three awards, they did come in second place in the table presentation, or what that table looked like, not just from the food, but also decorations. They had, the ladies had put together a beautiful fresh flower arrangement, all done with uh, um, uh, great whites and yellows and the variegated uh, ginger leaves. Very, very simple, but very, very pretty. So they were, you know, unfortunately, they didn't get a plaque for it, but they did get a runner-up position for the table presentation, which was, a distinctive honor, especially like I say, when they were going to head head to head against all of these other very, very well known restaurants and hotel restaurants. Okay, if um, does it look like the chef is calling in? So we're going to go ahead and uh, move on, and we'll take. Let's see if we'll take a picture from 
one of the uh, other chefs who did that we don't have. I think the next one would be the Cafe Reconcile and their bisque. I do believe we've got a picture of a wonderful crawfish bisque. Let's see if we've got that on there. And we take Cafe Reconcile, there you go. Beautiful set on the black plastic, plastic plate, but beautifully done, so it really shows it up. Uh, this is Don Boyle, and for those that know, Cafe Reconcile is a wonderful institution set up by a, the local arts diocese of New Orleans, uh, right down in mid-city here, which actually takes um, uh, young men and ladies at risk and actually puts them into a, a working culinary program. Don Boyd has been the resident chef and culinary uh, instructor there since day one. We had them open, uh, we, excuse me, we had them on Restaurant Review probably in our second season right when they first opened. They do a bang of business because first of all the prices are extremely reasonable and, and the quality of the food is very, very good. So it really felt, has uh, really served a wonderful need of one putting a, a nice fine dining restaurant in Central City but at the same time putting in affordable prices that anyone can afford. So Don is to be congratulated and he did turn out a lovely crawfish bisque that you just saw. Now in addition to that, I believe we, the Hilton Hotel, we had about four or five hotels, including the Doubletree of course, which, uh, which uh, sponsored the event, uh, that actually participated and provided a crawfish dish. And I believe this was a, uh, a, a pasta dish that the chef at the Hilton did. Let's see if we can take a look if we got you know, a great crawfish pasta with the uh, curlicues served warm, of course. Uh, not, not an etouffee or anything, but uh, crawfish pasta has become very, very popular. Uh, you know, here in our city, we, we love to substitute, even though shrimp is probably the more routine uh, element put into this pasta dish uh, because of the great... Uh, crawfish season that we have using all of our domestic crawfish. This is an easy substitution. So once again, even though the Hilton Hotel did not win, they did a great job of presenting a crawfish pasta dish for everyone to, to try. Now, of course, people were uh, getting quite filled when they would eat. When you go to, even though you might not be get, getting a huge serving of each portion, at the same time, when you start eating these things, as you saw right there, it doesn't take much on those to quite fill up. So you've got to really pace yourself, whether you're a judge or whether you're just uh, enjoying it. Because if you really want to get around to all the tables and try them all, you really have to pace yourself to make sure you get a chance to try them all and sample them. Now let's see, I think we have uh, another one that we are waiting for. And let's see what we have here. I think this is going to be uh, Le Pavillon. Now Pavillon, we're going to be giving it away, was... The, I believe, top winner. Let's see if we can, I think they're, they had a Louisiana crawfish cakes. Let's talk about this a little bit, uh, and um, really a magnificent presentation. Again, you see, we're only using plastic plates, and that's all they can serve in, on, in these massive crowds. But it's saying, look how beautifully decorated, with, of course, with a beautiful boiled crawfish. This is uh, two crawfish cakes in the center. Now, you know, Louisiana's famous for its crab cakes. This is beautifully done with a substitution. Very, very light sauce right in the center of that picture. You can take a look there. And then served over baby spinach. Uh, and again, a light, light dressing with just a hint of lemon a little, for you to squeeze fresh lemon on. Beautifully done. And this, I believe, was either the second or the uh, third place. A uh, second place. This was a second place winner. So this was Le Pavillon Hotel, which is... Um, Wonderful hotel in New Orleans, uh, at one point owned by the Saints. I don't know if they still do, uh, but a beautiful uh, Renaissance structure that uh, is right down on Pardis from the Superdome. Years ago, it was very famous for its couture, and w after a while, the cuisine kind of fell off, but now they're back with a new chef, and really, like I say, they play second, so it's something you want to try. Okay, another famous, and there's a chef, oops, sorry, there you go, there was a chef there dishing it out. Uh, another famous restaurant owned by the Brennan chain, Baco's, um, was up next. Uh, again, we didn't, I don't have the chef's name, he wasn't there, but uh, did send a fabulous, and let's see, he had a wonderful artichoke um, crawfish dish. Served warm with artichoke stuffing, really, really nice. Uh, and again, Baco's, as we mentioned, is 
uh, one of the magnificent Brennan restaurants here, located in our French Quarter, in the uh, beautiful little, well, it used to be uh, a small boutique hotel, now part of the W chain. We have a couple of W hotels in our city, and that's one of them, uh, right down on Charter Street, famous for its uh, valet parking and beautiful rendition of, of a restaurant with magnificent cathedral type ce ceilings, great, great wood burning stove, a wonderful female chef there that brought in a lot of great ideas using vegetables, etc. Also, uh, all, always known for that great wood, wood burned uh, roasted garlic, great breads, and their pizzas to be uh, just the best in the city. So that was Baco's. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't win, but did a great presentation. Okay, uh, let's see. We'll go ahead now, and I think we have to move into uh, back to the... Oh, there's one more. Let's see. We did have one more, and this is another restaurant in a hotel, but this is out in Jefferson Parish, which is Hedges, and Hedges uh, is the name of the restaurant in the Wyndham Hotel, uh, and I believe the... Uh, this is a row, right? Uh, these are crawfish rolls. You can see a beautiful presentation, and this did win third place. The original chef who first came on our show, uh, who pioneered the restaurant, has now been promoted. He's uh, head of all food and beverage for the hotel. They brought in a new one who I haven't had a chance to meet, but certainly is following in uh, the footsteps and has become very, very creative. As you can see, this dish has a beautiful, again, once again, putting a, an ornamental crawfish, or you're well, welcome to eat the crawfish with some drizzle, but a beautiful Asian influence of a soft roll. The roll is uh, rice paper, but very light heated with a great, great crawfish stuffing. So once again, this did extremely well in place third, which is very, very good among all these other competitors, especially the head, Hedges and the Windsor Hotel, excuse me, Wyndham Hotel, is approximately uh, three years old, so very new by many hotel standards to come up there and, and capture that third place prize. All right, now let's go back and we can look at some of the other ones that we do have pictures of. Uh, the next one we have would be uh, who, one of our favorites here locally that we were also able to pl place on the show, and that is Bite Your Tongue. Bite Your Tongue Cafe and, and Catering is on Magazine Street, and uh, do a wonderful, very creative dish called Crawfish Cheesecakes. And uh, just take a look there. That is really a wonderful dish with very, very light sauce. Such an unusual idea. Great, great talk. Actually like a cheesecake, not from the sweet portion of, but as you know, cheese in many of the European countries are actually served as a dessert. So this is not going to be something you would be as a dessert. It's actually a lunch entree at the Bite Your Tongue with a white, with a very, very nice light sauce. Served warm, really very creative. And the chef there is, of course, in the owner's Martine. Hopefully you remember that pretty smiling face. She and uh, her, her stepbrother, Harry, was on our show, I think, about two years ago when they first opened. Uh, they had a lucrative catering business for years and then decided to start with takeout and small-time uh, cafe seating in, in Magazine Street. They're right off of Napoleon Avenue, open uh, during the lunch day uh, and early morning, uh, but closed in the evening. But if you ever get a chance to try them, very, very well done. Now, what's really new, and to their credit, is that they did win the Table Presentation Award. So, congratulations, just as we, it's really shocking that both the uh, Common Street Deli, which we tell you was runner-up, and Martine, Bite Your Tongue, won the first place in the Table Presentation. And of all things, in talking to, uh, to Martine and her husband who was there, is her husband actually did the decorations. She was uh, laboring over the stove during all the preparation, and he actually created a lovely presentation with uh, um, a beautiful, clear, transparent, opalescent-type vase, uh, some natural branches, some, uh, I don't know, it was white baby's bread. Very, very simple, and some beads all around and crawfish all around. Very, very simple. And uh, I believe we have a caller on the phone, as we mentioned, that we were expecting some of our chefs to call. Let's see. Who it is, please. Who's calling? Martine with Bite Your Tongue Takeout and Catering. Perfect timing. We're just, as your pretty face, we were just telling the folks that we showed your lovely creative dish. Sorry you didn't win, but 
we're so proud of you that you won first place in table decoration, even though from your own mouth it was your husband's inspiration. <laughs> it huh? was my husband's inspiration. Well, He's the us, creative one. I just do the cooking. He does uh, all the decorating. Y'all both creative. Tell the folks a little better. Describe your creation because uh, I would rather you tell them a little bit more about the ingredients. We're doing just an overview until the chef's call. Okay, we had the uh, crawfish cheesecake with the Creole mustard sauce. The uh, crust was breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. Um, the filling was crawfish, um, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, onions, and smoked Gouda cheese, ah. and also regular Gouda cheese, wow. and of course the cream cheese. And you just mix it all up and bake it in the oven. And, and the sauce again, Creole mustard? Creole mustard sauce. It was really? made with um, homemade mayonnaise, the Creole mustard, and a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, we were pulling for you. I know you were on the top of my, on my list with regard, and I'm sorry you didn't pull it out in the food part, but you were lucky enough to be chosen, certain for the table presentation. That's a great honor for a first-time situation. It was. It was very nice. We enjoyed it. We, you we did made a good. lot of great contacts also. That's, that's the key, of course, yeah. is the exposure. That's why we try and get all of our new restaurants, as many as we can out there, so that way our city can get a handle on some of these new places that some of them never heard of. Right. Once again, tell the folks, when are you open? It's weekdays through Saturday at lunchtime? Yes, we're open Monday through Friday from 1030 until 3, and on Saturdays from 11 a.m. until 4. Right. Yeah. And they can take out, they can eat, eat in, in, they can uh, fax for lunch. I understand. I know that fax machine is going all the time yeah. when I go there. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, you have that, the very lucrative catering business, right? Yes, we cater all of your events. Excellent, We excellent. do a lot of um, office parties and, you know, a lot of office functions for pharmaceutical reps. Right. We do so a lot don't, of catering. Okay, anything else? We really appreciate you taking time from your schedule and calling us. And, once again, many thanks for participating, and hopefully you'll do some more for us in the future. Oh, anytime, Bob. Just give us a call. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was Martine from Bite Your Tongue Catering and Cafe. As we mentioned, it was perfect timing. She was able to uh, get in right uh, on the dish that we were talking about. Okay, now we're going to move on to our third dish, and hopefully our, uh, our chef will call in. Let's see which one we need to talk about now. This is um, from the Double Tree Hotel, uh, the chef... And the etouffee. Let's take a look at, at the Double Tree. Of course, was the actual sponsoring hotel from the place of actually donating the magnificent ballroom for us to for the Odyssey House to actually have this function. Uh, as we mentioned, it's uh, the the top floor, beautifully done, all glass. In fact, they used two ball, two actually ballrooms. The smaller ballroom was used for the desserts. They provide a complimentary coffee and desserts. They do a wonder for those who ever stay in the Doubletree. I don't know if this is universal or not, but they, instead of doing the uh, chocolate little mints or the little chocolates on your bedtime pillow, they do a fantastic cookie. It's a lot to eat, but it's the double chocolate chip, nice, thick, gooey, soft, well, usually warm when you get it. So they were serving those wonderful complimentary cookies with the coffees, et cetera, for dessert in the separate dining room, the Crescent dining room, big, big hit. So they were really, and that's been, uh, they've been very, very generous uh, in providing uh, the services and the location for this event every year for the Odyssey House, and we can't say enough for bottom. And what's good about it is they had a, uh, a beautiful, like I said, we'll go ahead and take a look uh, of their etouffee. And uh, let's see if we can get, there you go. Look how pretty this. And again, their, their table was probably third in, in, in presentation. They had this huge, which you could expect, huge table with crawfish and fresh uh, vegetables all over. And as you can see, the wonderful etouffee. As you know, we all know our etouffee being over rice. And this was over rice with a great, great kick. But it also had one of the neatest things, the um, wonderful sliced julienne vegetables. You can see them all along the sides, fresh uh, Cucumbers, zucchinis, uh, carrots, and weren't served cold. They were almost, they weren't roasted. They might have been just a bit al dente, a little warmed, but certainly still very, very um, uh, brittle to taste. Beautiful crawfish serving, so they really had a, a wonderful dish. And even though uh, they didn't win the top winners in either one of the categories, 
They are a very, very generous host. And hopefully we'll get a picture of the chef up there. I think we have a picture of the chef, do we or not? Let's see. Yeah, there he is. And uh, just did a, a bang-up job. Of the, he had some help because he was really serving over and above. People were coming back and back and back. So I think he was one of the really heavily hit tables where people went back for more than one serving. So really was a great guy, and we wish him well, and thanks again to the Double Tree. Okay, let's see what's next. I know we have another one coming up. I might be running up a little fast, so let before we go that, let me talk a little bit more before we go into the, to the next one. I think we have two more, and then we're going to see some of the end. Let's go ahead, and uh, what we might do now is take, if the director can move on, we can look at, uh, we will really, as you know, we were fortunate enough to, uh, for the Odyssey House to donate us several pairs of tickets to give away. Not only us, so our good friends, the Bob and Jan Carr radio show on Biz Radio WGSO. And each one of us were able to give away three sets of, of pairs of tickets. And what was really nice is several of the winners actually came up to the judging table where we met, introduced themselves, told us how much they enjoyed the show. So we asked their permission to show uh, a picture of you all to the audience because uh, we thought they were very, very nice. And let's see if we, our director can get the pictures up of the first couple. We'll tell you their names. And uh, I believe this is Mr. F.J. Flander. Yes, F.J. Flander and his wife Marie. Lovely, lovely, lovely couple. They live in, in Orleans. And uh, uh, they actually won off the Bob and Jan Carr show. But a very, very personable people and say they enjoy our show as well. So they really are double viewers and listeners, and we were pleased, pleased to meet them and uh, talk to them, and they did a beautiful job. They, they kind of skedaddled on. They ate as quickly because they couldn't stay for They were going to the Algie Haley Ballet last night, which was so well attended. So they really had a lucky weekend now together. What a packed, fun-filled night by winning the tickets and also being able to go to see that lovely, lovely ballet. Now, one of the sets of winners from our group was uh, a Mr. Eric and Kelly Mang, M-A-N-G. And uh, maybe get a picture of them. And they were from the River Ridge region and uh, new viewers. And uh, they had heard about us through several other sources and were real pleased when they won. And they told us they thoroughly enjoyed themselves. They were nice enough to, in fact, even call this morning and tell us, so thank you so much for the ticket. So we appreciate that. We welcome them. And again, that was just the folks. We had uh, four other sets of winners who hopefully attended. I know the, uh, one of them I do want to say hello to, and that's Miss Beverly Turner. This is a lady who wrote just a very, very complimentary letter about our program. And uh, as we mentioned, she did. She was one of the ones selected. Said she's been a loyal viewer and has tried, I think, perhaps 50% of the restaurants that we've had on. And has been pleasantly uh, enjoyed over 90, almost 90, or oh, not greater than 90% of them. So a wonderful testimony to something that we're doing out there. We, we, our whole purpose here is to get you all acclimated as quick as possible, especially to the newer restaurants, so they can, one, uh, reap the benefits of increased uh, uh, visitorship, and at the same time, get you all out there to enjoy for yourself and, and some of your friends. So, Ms. Turner, keep watching, and we hope uh, you'll get a chance in the future. As you know, we are also going to be doing some more things we're going to talk about, whereby uh, you, the audience, can participate with us, and we hope that you'll stay tuned for the future, uh, because uh, there's going to be a lot more, not only just these gala opportunities, there's also situations where, if you like, you can write in for some of the DVDs of our past shows or the current shows. So right before we close today, we're going to give you those uh, important addresses once again. Because if you do that, uh, we'll start. Sometimes we'll be getting gift certificates. Whatever we get, we would like to pass it on to you all to you to share. So this is a new incentive, and we're not uh, not used to it. But at the same time, we sure want you to reward you all, loyal viewers. Okay, let's see. We'll go on to a couple of the other uh, chefs and their dishes before we close up. Uh, and I think the next one, uh, we were waiting for the call, but let's see, we'll go ahead and do it. The next one was the Odyssey House itself. Okay, the Odyssey House itself, they actually, of course, again, the recipients 
of uh, this wonderful gala fundraiser. What's important about, uh, as we mentioned, this is a residential long-term treatment facility for the in inpatient care of men, women, and women with children with substance abuse problems. But what they had there, is, in addition to making these folks whole again, they have different vocational programs. And one, of course, that has had gone like, hit like wildfire around the city, as you know, because our restaurants are booming and always looking for people and always growing, as testimony to this, to this show, they have put in, a, X number of years ago, a culinary program. So just like our vocational schools like Delgado's have a wonderful culinary program where they're actually allowing their residents to get into a workable, meaningful uh, lifestyle so that when they're ready to go back into the real world or even during that time while they're there, they actually can participate and not only serving their fellow residents, but at the same time doing catering. Odyssey House is open for catering events. They do a lot with the public, so this is something you want to keep in mind whenever you're doing a function. Don't always go to the uh, right away to the most well-known for-profit ones. A lot of these not-for-profit organizations are starting, like Cafe Reconcile actually has a wonderful um, working restaurant that uh, provides an opportunity not only for them to do uh, to learn the skills but also ongoing. Uh, the Covenant House has just done one. We haven't had a chance to go down there and hopefully this year we will so we'll show you what that one looks like. Odyssey House has it in-house and also catering but not a retail establishment at this time. Hopefully one day they'll do that and of course we'd love to bring that to you. But what's really good about this is that to show the intensity of the program, uh, the, this gentleman won two awards. Uh, Derek, who is the head chef, we'll see him in a little bit, for his presentation, uh, actually won, that's two of his assistants, one of his, he won not only the popular vote, and the popular vote only was one, not three choices, but he also placed in the top three for the judges vote. So how do you like that? Now let's take a look at the creation that he made. We were hoping he would get in before we finish. Let's take a look. He did a fabulous presentation. Uh, it's called, let's see what he called if I can remember. It was um, hmm, a crawfish puff or puffy. I think he named it puffy. But what's really cool about it, let's take a look. It was a tower of phyllo dough, sort of a giant uh, um, fill of dough, but which really resembled a crawfish coming out of its hole. As you know, for those who have ever seen crawfish in the natural, they dig their mud holes so then they come out to the top. And it really was so creative because it resembled nature so much. And sure, he does have, have the uh, happy crawly crawfish coming out of the top of its thing. Uh, as you can saw, see, around the, the bed was a magnificent sauce, which was not only around the bed of the thing, but also filled to the brim of the Philo cave or whatever you want to call the shell. So a beautiful tasting cream sauce, not to have it all wonderfully spiced for New Orleans taste and then decorated as you saw with the great crawfish and some um, green onions and beautifully decorated. So well deserving of a, a top honors that he received. So we were real, real pleased. That was great for him, not only to win the popular award, but also to be right up there at the top in the uh, and the chef's voting as well. So showed you it had to be good. Well, what we did is uh, it's had a wonderful time, as we mentioned. Uh, we've had all these chefs come and uh, bring us their creations. We all had a chance to enjoy them. We hope that you'll consider the Crawfish Odyssey, along with all of the other galas. As you know, we have, because we're so rich with, uh, and blessed with New Orleans restaurants, we also are able to give back to a, to a lot of the not-for-profits that are constantly looking for revenue sources because uh, they're funding through grant writing or other, um, certainly other grants, uh, private situations or corporate are harder and harder to find. There's more and more not-for-profits and everyone's spreading the same dollar. So 
these fundraisers uh, are really their real hopes to supplement any of the revenues to keep their programs going. So we'll hope you will continue to, to patronize all of these events because it's so important to keep these facilities going. And uh, what better way than to go to a gala like this whereby uh, for the few dollars you expend, you've got uh, wonderful food from so many sources. So you're bound to find something you like, if not all of the things you like. Uh, wonderful wine, conversation, you know, great place to meet folks, usually beautiful music as we had here. So uh, it's certainly something for you to consider. And as we mentioned last night, we were so pleased that the Odyssey House did well because at the very same time, of course, town in the adjoining Paris was a very, very big fundraiser called A Taste of the Town, which supports our Louisiana Restaurant Association, which in turn supports these culinary programs and all the other things that the restaurants actually need to survive. So this was a dueling event, plus of all the other events like the Al Jahali, uh, um, dance theater going on, so many other things going on at the same time. And we're blessed in our city to be able to have just a, a wonderful variety of entertainment. However, like I say, it's always good for you to try and patronize the not-for-profits because you really are putting your money to do to, to do work. One, to actually uh, fund uh, the resources for these uh, facilities and the services they render, and two, you get ample reward in the wonderful entertainment and food festivities. Uh, I think we covered all of the situation. What we might do is, uh, let's see if we can regroup a little bit since uh, we didn't get as many chefs as we wanted. Uh, maybe our director can go ahead and, let's go back in the archives. We really haven't had any musical entertainment for you. We didn't want to jam the music down you if we got a lot of calls. So. What we're going to do is, uh, while we wait and see if we're getting called, let's go ahead and see if the director can go ahead and put up uh, one of our archive musicians for our entertainment. We'll come back and we'll talk whether we get a call or not. And if you want to call, don't forget, the lines are open. Do not forget, our number has hopefully been on the screen, 483-3336, 483-3338. We would love for you all to call. We'd love for you to come and tell us you know, about restaurants that we haven't heard. We've got some new ones. I was able to eat and talk to the owners of three new ones that we're going to be having on in the future. And we'll talk about it as we come back. So why don't we do this? I think our director's ready. Let's go ahead and uh, take a listen to one of our musicians. And on the flip side, if we don't get any more callers from uh, the chefs, or if you don't have any questions, I'll go ahead and start telling you about some of the newer restaurants and other events we've got planned. So, Mr. Director, let's see who you got for us. Well, we have a caller. Oh, I see. Well, wouldn't you know? Okay, perfect timing. Uh, let's see who's on the phone. Welcome to Restaurant Review. Hi, Bob. This is Beverly Turner. Oh, how are you, Miss Turner? <laughs> how sweet. I was. I was. Just I ain't been. By the way, your number has not been up on the um, screen the whole time. Cause oh, I apologize. I think probably the reason the director was doing that, not out of neglect, but probably because no other. we had scheduled the other. Several of the chefs had one to call in, and we figured that maybe if we had too many of the, reg of the regular calls during that time, they wouldn't be able to get through. And, of course, they were on a busy schedule. So we do apologize for that, but that was probably a very smart thing that he did. But we, we certainly will have it up the rest of the program. Well, I was waiting. I was on the computer, and my computer went down to try to find the number and everything. Oh, Bob, yeah. I'm sorry thing. we didn't get a chance to see you last night. Were you able to make it? Uh, no, because you told me it was tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry? You told me it was Saturday night. Oh, I certainly apologize. I <laughs> and, and now I'm looking at all these wonderful crawfish dinners. Oh, I'm so sorry. But no, I didn't. So, um, but it looked like it went well. And I hope that, in fact, um, I, I do I, volunteer I, every, at Odyssey every Christmas, my son and I. So um, I, it, was a, it was a worthy cause. Oh, it was, and I am so sorry because I thought, sure, you told me you were going on Saturday night. No, no, you were going that when was we my talked birthday. to you for your birthday, a, bl a belated birthday. I understand you had a birthday last weekend, wasn't it? Right. Right. How was your event? Did you, did you I think you said you were going to try one of our restaurants, La Petite Grocery? Yeah. Do you How want to did, comment on it? I'm sorry. If you don't mind, we'd love to hear. The food was exceptional. Their wine list, 
terrible. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and the waitress was very enthusiastic to begin with. This is what somebody else told, told me, the same thing. And in the middle of the meal, she just collapsed. Oh, my goodness. But the food was absolutely exceptional. Well, of course, you know, that's where we put our primary emphasis here, but that's only one part of the dining enjoyment. Absolutely. Uh, the thing I thought was so cute, they had so functional. Well, I think, if you, I don't know if you remember back, I saw that program in the center, how they had what I call a, a Catholic baptismal fund was their actual communal wine uh, cooler. Oh, I didn't uh, Did you see that? At, uh, did you sit at the front dining room, the back dining room? I think I sat in the back. In back. Did you notice if it was still the same? I hadn't been in a few months, but... In the center is a large, looked like a marble font. Where they put everybody's wine a, bottles? I'm sorry? Is that where you're talking about they put everybody's wine bottles? Right. What they do yeah. is they have a silver, uh, a silver metal liner, and then they ice all the wine. So that way the, all the tables are around that so they easily can serve. So that way you don't have to, have to be bothered with your own little individual set up and serving yourself. The waiters can, can keep control of, of the wine that you're drinking. Mm. But anyway... Oh. But the food was good. Oh, the food was excellent. I had a lot of trouble trying to find a champagne or a wine that I enjoyed. I had a good cosmopolitan, but their wine list was terrible. Well, I'm <laughs> sorry to hear that. I'll have to tell the chef and see what's the problem then. Because uh, now, I, I meant to write him a letter, but I've just been so busy. You know, well, sure, sure. Well, if I speak to him soon, I'll certainly pass on your compliments and okay. also your suggestions. But at the same time, and I do apologize, I just can't believe I told you no. <laughs> Saturday because I said April 1st, I thought. Now, maybe I thought April 1st was Saturday. You said, so, yeah. And then, um, and so I told my, my son was coming with me. So I called him when your program began, and I said, oh, my gosh, you don't believe this. It was last night. <laughs> Oh gee, I, well we owe you. So, well we're gonna we're gonna rectify that. The next time we get uh, something of the same sort, definitely you'll have another opportunity. Okay. And well, everything I, looked wonderful. It so really far. was. It was really lovely. And like I said, we were so pleased that some of the other viewers, as you saw, came up to us and uh, introduced themselves. Oh, I themselves. definitely would come up to you. So that's why I, you know, and thank you for mentioning that. I'm well, definitely. Like I say, I do apologize. We and this is perhaps the problems when you do will call. But uh, the uh, Odyssey House did not want to mail the tickets. They were afraid that you know it would, it would be slow yeah. in the mail. This and the other. So that's why it, they felt it was the easiest thing was um, just to pick them up. At but the I, what, I should, what I should do next time, if not, is if you have email, always to let me confirm it by email. So. Uh, you know, that way we'll put it precisely in writing so you won't have, hopefully, okay. a misunderstanding. But I do apologize, and like I said, we will make it up to you. Okay, and uh, Bob, really, you don't know how your restaurant review, it's not like, it's not a biased thing. It, you've got the people from the restaurant coming in and telling us what they're serving. Well, that's a, we say, who can do it better than the horse's mouth? Right. And especially today where the chef is the restaurant, many times, you know, that's their whole idea. As soon as they get a chance to get their feet well-trained is to go and open their own place so that they can be master of their own domain. Absolutely. And, and, so, and a reviewer, I can read all the reviews in the world, but I don't have the chef showing me what they do to a dish. Exactly. This is what we figured. My uh, taste is different than a lot of people. Right. Uh, uh, that's our focus, and, you know, we do at the end of the year, if you've ever seen our end-of-the-year show, we do actually give them ratings. And I used to do the reviews and keep them and post them, but uh, at the same time, each one of these at some point are going to be reviewed by someone else. So if you want to read a review, right. that's fine. Yeah. But I'm saying here you're seeing, and that's why when we, we couldn't wait to move it from radio to TV because you're actually seeing the dishes and hearing it from the creator, hopefully, of that dish. So you make up your mind whether you want to try it or not. It's not uh, an individual bias that a critic might have. Right, absolutely. So well, those, we, so, we so appreciate keep, that. Please because, keep up the show. Thank you, man. Stay tuned because, like I said, we've got some new ones. Listen up that are coming in to, uh, that we, you might want to try. Okay, I won't thanks, miss them. Thanks again. All right, again, thanks, Bob. Belated birthday to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What a sweet lady, huh? I know all of our audiences are as sweet as that. Uh, we uh, do apologize. Hopefully, no one else didn't did not show because of a lack of communi my miscommunication. 
but I think uh, she pointed out something we need to do that we need to be able to get to the uh, winners by email, hopefully, other than snail mail. Just like mailing the tickets takes a while, email is such a great convenience. So we're hoping more and more of our audience, not only for this, but just in life, will get technically involved in using email as, as a wonderful transmission of, of data and information. Okay, let's see. Um, we've got about a few more, 15 more minutes. Let, why don't we go ahead and let's hear uh, one little song. We're going to come back and talk about uh, the director's ready on the song. Yeah, let's go ahead and hear what, what he had queued up for us before the caller. Don't forget, call us, call us. Your numbers are going to be up there the rest of the show. We'd love to talk to you as we always do. And meanwhile, we're going to tell you about some new restaurants right on the other side of the song. Let's go ahead and hear what we've got up. and lovely Julia Dalla, multi-talented. Besides that great voice and a wonderful CD, Sephia, she's also the editor of one of the neatest magazines for one of the Louisiana State Museums. So must be really nice to be so blessed and talent, multi-talented. Anyway, well, we're talking about, uh, the, well, we've just about wrapped up the Crawfish Odyssey. We hope you enjoyed that part of it. 
Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some programming for you for the future. Again, in the remaining 10 or 15 minutes, don't hesitate to call us. The numbers will be up there uh, and ask us any questions you, you wish. But we have a couple things to tell you. Some of the newer restaurants we want to talk about. One is we had a lovely meal the other day at the Audubon Golf Course. Can you believe that? Audubon Park has done a wonderful, uh, and I'm not a golfer, but a, ma a magnificent renovation of its golf course and has put on this most beautiful restaurant that is open to the public with a multi-veranda all around. It's very comfortable. So there, we are talking to them next week, and we're going to find out when they're going to be coming on relatively soon. We think you're going to love it. One of the prettiest views here in the city, and, and not really well known. Everyone thinks it's only for the golfers. Quite the contrary. Another restaurant that's only been open a couple of months uh, called One. One is uptown on Hampson, across from Mignon Faget, I believe that is. Uh, not Mignon Faget, uh, uh, the ladies, I excuse them, thing. on Hampson, right off of Carrollton. This was originally uh, called, not originally, originally was uh, Frankie's and Padrino's, and of late, it's just taken over from these guys. They're doing a whole new menu, really slick, really good looking place. Again, a small home, but done quite the contrary on the inside, not the uh, old style, more the polished new look. So we're anxious for them. They're going to be coming on, I think, after Jazz Fest. They wanted to get through Jazz Fest. And lastly, we saw a conversion going on. Um, Right on St. Charles Avenue was a place that was for years a little small neighborhood supermarket, but did wonderful homemade bread, stuffed breads. Hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. It was originally bought out by the foodie guy who, when they bought foodies, and of course, when foodies closed, it's been closed. Well, a new owners have taken over. Uh, it's going to be called Sacy Bar, and it's really going to be an inventive new place. Uh, it's going to be a combination of a French pastry store on one side, another kind of Italian pizza, homemade pizza, and all this stuff. So there's three different locations. It's going to be open late, late night because you know it's at the university district. They'll do delivery. Sounds like a fun spot, and hopefully the food is going to be as good as what its intention is. So we're looking for them, and we'll be talking to them as well. So those are just three of the new ones. Take a look for them. Like I say, if you want to try one before we get to you, go ahead and give them a try. They're the most functional. The other two, the Audubon is, is great whenever you can go. They're only open for breakfast and lunch, and we'll be showing you some of their great features. Now, one of the other things we want to talk about is um, two things of programming. As we mentioned, we are going to be sharing with you more and more opportunities, whether it's at galas or whether if you'd like to receive some uh, DVDs of the, of the show or past shows. So we want you to get used to our address and our email. Write us about anything you want. You'll always be put into the pot, and hopefully we'll be receiving some of these things, like poor Miss Turner didn't get, but some of the other folks did enjoy. Uh, so our address, once again, for those who don't know, if you want to go through snail mail, restaurant review, post office box 55696, Metairie, Louisiana, 70055-56. Dash five six nine six. That's a lot. Hopefully the director will put it up. But the easiest way is to the email restaurant review at yahoo.com. Remember, we're getting our website redone, so we can't use that email of the website. Restaurant review, one word at yahoo.com. Send us any comments. Put your name in the hat. Uh, you'll be hopefully you'll be happy with some of the things and uh, features that we'll be able to send to you now and in the future. Uh, another thing we want to tell you, one other program, program note, we are really blessed to be able to do another new show, and it's called Real Review, R-E-E-L. Uh, as a member of the New Orleans Film Festival, we want to bring something that is going to be 17 years old and still is not well as well known in the community as should be. That is the annual festival whereby we bring films of all nature to the city of New Orleans for you to share. All during the year, we're screening these films and getting them ready to show you in October. This weekly show, half-hour show, will show, besides having commentary from representatives of the film festival to explain all the aspects of the film festival, you will each week see a well, week. That'll be a film that'll be less than 20 minutes long in order to accommodate our 30-minute show. Some of them will be smaller, some of them will be at 20 minutes. 
at the end of each show, you'll be asked to rate that show, just like we rate them as a judge, and asked to send in to their website, realreview at yahoo.com, and you'll also have opportunities. We will be giving away passes to screenings. We'll be giving you rewards for popular to be a judge. So it's a great new fun show. We hope you like it. Only half hour, fast paced. Don't know what it's coming out yet, but as soon as we get the, the date on it, uh, we will tell you. Again, it won't be live like this one, but you watch it, and then you can email or snail mail to try and get in all the programs that are going on there. So watch for it. Real Review, New Orleans Film Festival. We think you'll like it. Be quite entertaining, quite informative. You'll see some celebrities, people you'd like to see around our city that you know that are involved in films will be here as a guest each week. Okay, let's see. Uh, we've got, still got some time left. Got anybody else calling? Nobody yet? 483-3336, 3338? No? Got a little time? All right, let's go ahead and finish for you. Um, as we mentioned, those three new restaurants, we do have some others that... We visited, haven't uh, um, brought on the show yet, Antoinette. Antoinette opened uh, in February of this year on Magazine Street. Uh, it's in the old Sugar Magnolia location, which is the Lower Garden District and what we call the Magazine Triangle, where the street actually splits off and becomes separate streets. Hopefully you know where that is. They're open for breakfast, brunch, and lunch. Uh, beautiful location, two stories. Got some interesting food. We had some interesting treats there, so it's something you might want to try. Uh, uh, let's see if we have something else that we haven't told you about. Uh, again, we want to remind you of that Italian restaurant that won't come on our show, Nardo's. Even though they don't want to come on, we want you to try them. It's a great little addition to the uptown area. It's on Laurel, and I don't know the exact corner, but it's been uh, that rest for years there was a place called Norby's known well to Loyola give them a try what's interesting about it is old line Italian but you can build your own or customize your own pasta choices sauces entree meats whatever you choose so it's a fun little place I think you should try okay I think uh, we're about wrapping up for the day uh, again come back next week uh, we're gonna hopefully bring you a new restaurant next week and if not we'll always bring you with something important but we've got a lot more this year. We've got a lot more going on. And we've got a lot of opportunities for you to participate and receive some of the... Uh, if you don't get a chance with us, you can catch an old show. You can uh, uh, go and get to receive something with the restaurant. Or now you'll also have a dinner. So what better than maybe winning a free dinner and a movie? Uh, and so that would be a great combination. So we're here to please you. We're really glad to hear that our audience is giving us pretty good feedback. Uh, at the same time, uh, let's see how we're doing. Are we ready to go? Okay, folks, it looks like we can call it another day for this weekend, the beginning of April. Enjoy the upcoming, well, we've got the French Quarter Fest coming, then uh, the Jazz Fest. We will hopefully see you next Saturday. Until then, take care. I'm Bob Bockelman for Restaurant Review.